Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. If Netanyahu has a long-term plan for Gaza, he isn't sharing it. Abortion rights advocates win major victories in Ohio, Kentucky. The politics of looking strong. This year certain to be hottest in history, with October breaking monthly heat record. See Bangura runs for a pair of short yardage TDs to get Ohio past Buffalo 20-10. If Netanyahu has a long-term plan for Gaza, he isn't sharing it. Washington Post. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is yet to articulate any long-term plan for Gaza and its 2.3 million inhabitants, following the recent Hamas-led attacks. As a result, he is being criticized for allowing global anger over the civilian death toll from Israeli airstrikes to take root. Netanyahu has vaguely spoken about cutting off Gaza from Israel, but on Monday he stated in an interview with ABC News that he believes Israel will have overall security responsibility for Gaza indefinitely. This has sparked questions as to whether Israel will be reoccupying Gaza and whether it will have to take responsibility for humanitarian issues. If Netanyahu's remarks are taken at face value, he is committing Israel to a costly occupation that will weaken its military at a time when it is facing renewed regional threats. Many fear that Israel could seek to force significant numbers of Palestinians out of Gaza, even if this violates international law and echoes the Arab displacement that followed the 1948 war that established Israel. Israeli officials have suggested that they want to maintain their own security while leaving responsibility for governing Gaza to someone else, but it is unclear who that would be. Abortion rights advocates win major victories in Ohio, Kentucky. Washington Post. In Ohio, voters passed a constitutional amendment guaranteeing access to abortion, while in Kentucky, Democratic Governor Andy Bashir was re-elected after attacking his opponent for supporting the state's near-total ban on abortion. These victories for abortion rights advocates reflect the enduring demand for access to abortion and could have far-reaching implications for the 2024 election. The results highlight the power of the abortion issue to mobilize the Democratic base and sway moderates and some Republicans. Meanwhile, Republican candidates who support abortion restrictions continue to struggle to find an effective message. The passage of the Ohio Amendment, known as Issue 1, comes after Ohioans voted in August against a proposal that would have made it harder to amend the state constitution and boosted the chances of abortion opponents. Preliminary exit polls showed that one in five Republicans and nearly two-thirds of independents supported the amendment, indicating that abortion rights are popular across party lines. The results suggest that anti-abortion politicians should be concerned about the future. In Kentucky, abortion was a key issue in the gubernatorial election, with Bashir attacking his opponent, Daniel Cameron, for supporting the state's abortion ban without exceptions for rape and incest. Bashir's campaign ads, which featured a young woman who was sexually assaulted and criticized Cameron's stance on abortion, made a strong impression on voters. The election results in Kentucky and Ohio underscore the vulnerability of Republicans on the abortion issue and the potential impact of the abortion debate on future elections. The results of Tuesday's elections have implications beyond Ohio and Kentucky. Democrats have signaled that they will make abortion a key issue in the 2024 presidential race, regardless of the GOP nominee. Republicans, on the other hand, are divided on the issue, with former President Donald Trump backing away from strict abortion bans. Efforts are underway to put abortion directly on the 2024 ballot in other states, including Arizona. The election results indicate that the fight over abortion will continue to shape American politics in the coming years. The politics of looking strong. Foreign affairs. The current slate of Republican presidential candidates disagree on many things, be it how much to restrict abortion or whether U.S. President Joe Biden rightfully won the 2020 election. But when it comes to international affairs, almost all the contenders have taken aggressively hawkish policy positions. The top four frontrunners for the GOP nomination Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, and former U.S. President Donald Trump have endorsed attacking Mexico to combat that country's drug cartels. Trump, for instance, said he would send to Mexico all necessary military assets, including the U.S. Navy. Most of the field has also called for escalating confrontation with Iran. And the candidates have, by and large, demanded more hostility toward China, often using dire terms in making their appeals. DeSantis, for example, declared that Washington must treat Beijing as it treated the Soviets. Haley asserted that China is leading a new global axis of evil. Ramaswamy labeled China our top enemy. Politicians have noticed. Over the last half century, candidates from both parties have frequently used aggressive foreign policies to demonstrate that they are strong enough to lead the United States. This hawkishness can help win elections. 
But it also produces a suite of policies, rising defense budgets, open-ended wars of choice, unilateral diplomacy, that are at odds with public opinion. Fixing this disconnect will not be easy given the cold electoral logic. But candidates can look strong without being hawkish if they redirect their aggression away from international adversaries and toward the domestic elites who promote belligerence. Politicians can also explain that strong leadership requires sticking to a set of core priorities, such as reinforcing the credibility of the United States alliances, instead of expanding Washington's foreign policy commitments. Meanwhile, voters and pundits should be aware that a seemingly reasonable desire to elect a strong commander-in-chief can actually distort U.S. foreign policy, encouraging leaders to make decisions that are more hawkish than what Americans want. When John F. Kennedy ran for president in 1960, he saw foreign policy as one of his principal political vulnerabilities. Kennedy had served with distinction in the Navy during World War II, but he had little high-level experience handling international affairs. By contrast, the Republican presidential nominee, Richard Nixon, had gained fame leading anti-communist investigations in the U.S. Senate, confronted Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev in a nationally televised debate, and spent eight years touring the world as vice president under Dwight Eisenhower the man who remained the country's most trusted voice on global issues. John Kenneth Galbraith, a Harvard economist who was one of Kennedy's foreign policy advisors, summarized this challenge in a campaign memo, arguing that Nixon's claim to vast experience in a period of trouble and peril is going to be one of our most difficult and perhaps our most difficult issue. This year certain to be hottest in history, with October breaking monthly heat record. The Sydney Morning Herald October 2023 broke global monthly heat records, making it virtually certain that this year will be the hottest in 125,000 years, according to the Copernicus Climate Change Service. The average surface air temperature in October was 0.85 degrees above the 1991 to 2020 average, and the first 10 months of this year have recorded the highest global mean temperature at 1.43 degrees above the 1850 to 1900 pre-industrial average. Climate scientists warn that without aggressive action to limit greenhouse gas emissions, warming will continue and extreme heat events will become more frequent. C. Bangura runs for a pair of short yardage TDs to get Ohio past Buffalo 20-10. Associated Press. Ohio defeated Buffalo 20-10 in a Mid-American Conference matchup on Tuesday night. C. Bangura scored two short yardage touchdowns, including the game-sealing one-yard touchdown run with 155 remaining. Buffalo's C.J. Ogbonna scored a two-yard touchdown run to tie the game at 10 all in the fourth quarter. Ohio's Johnny Spedek kicked a 25-yard field goal to give the Bobcats a 13-10 lead. Curtis Rourke threw for 121 yards for Ohio, while Buffalo's Cole Snyder threw for 171 yards. Ohio held Buffalo to 295 yards of offense, while only gaining 242 yards themselves. Democrat Andy Bashir wins re-election for governor in Kentucky. Washington Post. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir has won re-election, according to the Associated Press. Bashir, a Democrat, defeated Republican challenger Daniel Cameron to secure a second term in the Deep Red State. The result is a blow for both former President Donald Trump and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, both of whom endorsed Cameron. Bashir is the son of a former governor and has built a strong personal brand in Kentucky. He has defied political trends by focusing heavily on local and state economic issues, winning the highest approval rating of any Democratic governor in the U.S. Bashir was also able to maintain cross-party appeal, winning the election by framing it as a choice to move forward rather than to the right or left. He received congratulations from President Joe Biden. The Kentucky governor's race drew over $77 million in total spending, with Democrats spending about $48 million to Republicans, roughly $30 million. University Antisemitism at Record Levels, Charity. BBC. Anti-Semitic incidents at UK universities have risen sharply, causing Jewish students to feel deeply anxious, according to the Union of Jewish Students. The Community Security Trust recorded 67 anti-Semitic incidents at 29 campuses from October 7 to November 3, compared to 12 incidents during the same period last year. Experts also warn of rising reports of Islamophobic incidents, with 31 incidents recorded at UK universities in the same period, compared to three last October. The conflict between Israel and Hamas has spilled over onto UK university campuses, with groups monitoring hate crimes reporting increased tensions. Move over, JWST, first Euclid telescope images of the cosmos stun. ABC. The European Space Agency's Euclid Space Telescope has captured stunning images of space, revealing a region rich in star-forming activity. 
Euclid, named after the Greek mathematician Euclid, launched on July 1 and has since traveled around 1 million kilometers to reach its vantage point. Over the course of its six-year mission, Euclid will take wide images of the cosmos in visible light and near-infrared to determine the location of all the matter in the universe. Currently, only 5% of the universe is visible, while the other 95% is made up of dark matter and dark energy, which are invisible. Euclid aims to answer the question of where all the matter is located. The telescope has two main instruments to capture visible light and near-infrared light and will create the largest cosmic 3D map ever made. Euclid has the advantage of being fast and able to focus on large areas of the sky. The first images released by Euclid are stunning and provide a glimpse of the impressive map it will create. BOJ likely to end negative rate in early 2024, price expert says. Bloomberg. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, is likely to end its negative interest rate policy early next year and keep rates at zero without further hikes, according to economist Tsutomu Watanabe. Watanabe believes that persistent inflation in 2024 will be accompanied by wage growth that is as high or higher than this year. He argues that with consumers' expectations and tolerance for price rises improving, firms will continue to pass increased labor costs from wage hikes onto prices. Watanabe also disagrees with the belief that Japan has already exited deflation, stating that the BOJ will likely increase rates up to 0%, but then wait to see what happens to commodity prices and wages before making further adjustments. Wednesday's Time Schedule. Associated Press. The article lists the NBA and NHL games scheduled for Wednesday, November 8, as well as college basketball, men's and women's, and MLS playoff games. Hark! Judy Dench proves that Shakespeare's rightful place is on the radio. Telegraph. BBC Radio 3 is celebrating Shakespeare Day with a day of Shakespearean music from 6.30 a.m. until 10.45 p.m. Radio has long been associated with Shakespeare and as today marks 400 years since the publication of the first folio, the BBC has been pulling out all the stops. The day will finish with a live performance of Henry V from the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. BBC Radio 3 is also broadcasting a second experimental take on Hamlet, and a documentary about playwright Robert Greene. Corville makes FG as time expires, Ball State scores last 10 to beat Northern Illinois 17-10. Associated Press. Ball State defeated Northern Illinois 20-17 on Tuesday night with a 36-yard field goal by Jackson Corville as time expired. The Cardinals scored the last 10 points of the game, including a game-tying touchdown pass from Keel Kelly to Tanner Koziel with 3.44 remaining. Ball State's defense then forced a turnover, allowing Corville to kick the winning field goal. Kelly had 115 passing yards and 66 rushing yards with a touchdown, while Marquez Cooper added 93 rushing yards for Ball State. Rocky Lombardi had 141 passing yards and a touchdown for Northern Illinois. Original photo from iconic album cover discovered. BBC. A man depicted on the cover of Led Zeppelin IV has been identified as a 19th-century Thatcher from Wiltshire. Brian Edwards of the University of the West of England discovered that the photograph was taken by Ernest Farmer. Edwards said that it was a revelation to him as a longtime fan of the band, and Led Zeppelin IV has sold over 37 million copies worldwide. Edwards discovered that the photograph was taken by Ernest Farmer, who died in 1944. The whereabouts of the original framed photograph is unknown. Leave it to beavers? Not if you're a wolf. New York Times. A new study has investigated the effect of wolves on beaver activity in Voyagers National Park in northern Minnesota. By hunting beavers further away from their colonies, wolves limit the extent to which beavers can cut down trees and transform the landscape. The beaver's appetite for deciduous trees can eliminate species like aspens near their homes, leaving a conifer buffer. The researchers found that wolves hunted more on longer beaver trails, preventing them from sculpting up to 18 sq miles of the forest. The paper has raised interesting possibilities and could catalyze a lot more studies. Ukraine repels Russian attacks as rains stall Putin's third wave. The Independent. Ukrainian troops have repelled several Russian attacks in the past 24 hours in different parts of the country. The General Staff of Armed Forces of Ukraine said its troops beat back at least 15 attacks near Kupiansk in northeastern Ukraine and 18 attacks near Marienka further south. Nine attacks were also repelled in and near Avdiivka, a strategic city that Moscow is attempting to recapture. However, heavy rain has stalled Vladimir Putin's third major advance on Avdiivka and ruled out any new Russian movements. Russian forces have been targeting Avdiivka with artillery for the past week. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your trusted observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we have quite a diverse range of news to cover.
from the lack of a long-term plan for Gaza by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to major victories for abortion rights advocates in Ohio and Kentucky, and the enduring power of looking strong in American politics. We also have updates on the hottest year in history, the stunning images captured by the Euclid Space Telescope, and the rising incidents of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia at UK universities. Plus, we'll touch on sports, music, and even a fascinating study on the relationship between wolves and beavers. So, let's dive in. First up, we have the ongoing situation in Gaza, where Prime Minister Netanyahu is facing criticism for not sharing a long-term plan. It seems he's keeping his cards close to his chest, leaving many to wonder about the future of Gaza and its inhabitants. If Netanyahu's remarks are to be taken seriously, it appears Israel could be committing to a costly and potentially controversial occupation of Gaza. This raises concerns about the impact on Israel's military and its ability to handle other regional threats. It's a delicate situation, and the world is watching to see how it unfolds. Moving on to the U.S., we have some significant victories for abortion rights advocates in Ohio and Kentucky. These wins highlight the demand for access to abortion and could have far-reaching implications for the 2024 election. It's clear that the abortion issue remains a powerful motivator for the Democratic base and has the potential to sway moderate voters as well. On the other hand, Republican candidates who support abortion restrictions are struggling to find an effective message. The results of these elections indicate that the fight over abortion will continue to shape American politics in the coming years. Now, let's talk about the politics of looking strong, especially in the context of the current slate of Republican presidential candidates. It seems almost all of them have taken aggressively hawkish positions on international affairs, from attacking Mexico to escalating confrontation with Iran and China. This is not a new trend, candidates from both parties have often used aggressive foreign policies to demonstrate their strength and win elections. However, this hawkishness can lead to policies that are out of touch with public opinion and potentially harmful in the long run. It's crucial for candidates to redirect their aggression toward domestic issues and prioritize core priorities like reinforcing alliances instead of expanding foreign commitments. And as voters and pundits, we should be aware of how the desire for a strong leader can distort foreign policy decisions. Shifting gears, let's talk about the climate crisis. The Copernicus Climate Change Service has declared that 2023 is virtually certain to be the hottest year in 125,000 years. This is a stark reminder of the urgent need for aggressive action to limit greenhouse gas emissions. If we don't take action, warming will continue, and extreme heat events will become more frequent. It's a wake-up call for all of us to prioritize sustainability and do our part to combat climate change. On a lighter note, the Euclid Space Telescope has captured stunning images of space, revealing a region rich in star-forming activity. This telescope is on a mission to map the cosmos and determine the location of all the matter in the universe. Currently, only 5% of the universe is visible, while the other 95% is made up of dark matter and dark energy. Euclid aims to shed light on this hidden universe and provide answers to fundamental questions about the nature of our universe. The first images released by Euclid are truly breathtaking, and I can't wait to see what else this telescope will discover. In the UK, there is concerning news about rising anti-Semitic and Islamophobic incidents at universities. The conflict between Israel and Hamas has spilled over onto campuses, leading to increased tensions. It's disheartening to hear that Jewish and Muslim students are feeling anxious and targeted. We must work together to create an inclusive and safe environment for all students, regardless of their background or beliefs. Now, let's quickly touch on some other news stories. We have updates on sports, with Ohio defeating Buffalo in a Mid-American Conference matchup and Ball State beating Northern Illinois in a close college football game. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir has won re-election, which is a significant blow to former President Donald Trump and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. And in the world of music, an original photo from the iconic Led Zeppelin IV album cover has been discovered, revealing the identity of the man depicted. To wrap up, we've covered a wide range of topics today, from international politics to climate change, sports, and culture. It's always fascinating to see how these different facets of our world intersect and influence one another. As always, I welcome your thoughts and questions. What are your ideas on the lack of a long-term plan for Gaza? How do you feel about the victories for abortion rights advocates in Ohio and Kentucky? And what are your thoughts on the need for candidates to look strong without being hawkish in international affairs? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for joining me today, and remember, in the vast tapestry of the Six Degrees world, every story is connected. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team.
These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.